Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to is Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Acts chapter 3, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Acts chapter 3. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or, or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw that his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though... We had made this man walk by our own power or godliness, for it was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you, now, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance, but God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Then Moses said, Anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from God's people. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in the covenant God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, Through your descendants, all the families, of earth, all the families on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to you people of Israel to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. Amen. So what did you think of Acts chapter 3? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Um, so Acts chapter 3 starts off with Peter healing a crippled beggar and um, I put off to I wrote up to the side through faith instantly healed and strengthened I just love that um, 
but I wanted to back up a little bit and just um, kind of go through what happened like he was standing at the temple gate begging and I'm sure that you've been maybe driving past a highway or down the street or maybe walking um, through a shopping center and there was somebody there asking you for money and when I was reading this all I could think of was a lot of the times when I'm passing by those people I don't typically always have money um, to give and I always wish that I did but what a much more wonderful profound thing to be able to give somebody is faith and to give somebody healing um, and you know I just I wish I was able to do that you know I wish I had that and I'm gonna keep praying on it because I know that it's something that God has blessed all of us with and it's something that I know that if I continue spending time in the Word and continue growing in my love of God and growing with God and being refined through Him that it's something that I have the ability to do. God has granted us that power through Jesus Christ. So I know that it's possible and I can just only imagine. Um, it says, I don't have any silver or, or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. But I, and I'm wondering if I guess part of my thought process in this is that on the other side of that is the person they had to have faith and believe that it was possible as well. Um, you know, he was standing out there believing that people would bless him with money. So how much more would it be for him to believe that they could heal him and allow him to walk again? Um, so it says, then Peter took the lame man by the hand and helped him up. Um, so I think that this was a big act of faith on Peter's part as well to actually reach out in action. You know, they always say prayer in action. You have to act upon your prayers. Um, so he reached out his right hand and helped him up. And as he did, so as he was in the act of helping him up, that's when he was instantly healed and strengthened. So it wasn't until, it wasn't just what Peter said or his faith, but it was the fact that he reached out to help this person. So he, he had that act of faith that he was going to get up and walk and then that person actually stepped into that faith by allowing himself to be picked up he didn't shake off Peter's hand and say you know no you know I can't walk and I'm unable to walk and you know I'm, I've been lame for all these years he didn't come up with excuses he allowed Peter to help him up so I think that's part of it you know when we when we want to help people they have to be willing to be helped um, as well and we have to um, you know, keep that in mind that not everybody that's out there with their hand out really wants to be helped. Um, so, you know, remember that as well. <laughs> um, and then it says he jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk, then walking and leaping and praising God. So walking, leaping, so showing by the way he was living that he was healed and that he and then praising God. Um, he went into the temple with them. So I think that it's important that we prove by the way that we live that we have been blessed by God. Um, and we, we make sure that we're praising Him, you know, as we walk in our faith. Um, so then I love how Peter capitalizes off of this miracle by speaking to the people about it. And he doesn't take any of the glory upon himself. He gives it all to God where it belongs. And, you know, a lot in this day and age, you know, they were used to prophets coming and performing miracles. I mean, it, it was all through the Old Testament. You know, prophets were showing up, doing all types of miraculous signs. Jesus came, did the same thing, and none of them believed that he was the last prophet, that he was the Messiah. Um, and I love how Peter made sure to not take that upon himself and say, you know, yeah, I performed this miracle. No, he put the um, put the glory where it belonged on God and on Jesus and we need to make sure we're doing that as well in, in all of our lives whenever we accomplish anything in our lives we have to realize that it's coming from God that power and that strength is coming from God we wouldn't have been able to do it if it weren't for God um, so then through faith in the name of Jesus this man was healed through faith and I underline that because I want to make that so um, firm in my mind that it's through faith in the name of Jesus that this man was healed so my faith and yours that, that this man was healed you know he believed enough to to um, to rise up um, with um, Peter's help with Peter's faith Peter's faith kind of transferred for to him and he believed it as well um, 
And then it says, friends, I realize that you and your leaders, did, um, what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. Um, so I like that he's acknowledging that they just didn't know any better. And it's kind of like how Jesus was on the cross saying, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, so it was done in ignorance. They didn't, they didn't know. And part of that was because their hearts were still hardened, just like as the disciples were going through their journey and Jesus kept trying to tell them like, Hey, they're going to kill me, but it's for y'all's benefit. Um, their hearts were hardened and they couldn't understand. Um, God had closed their ears to what was happening until the right time. And then um, in verse, one of the, you know, I love these, these words together, but God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold. So regardless of what people think or believe or regardless of people's ignorance, God's going to have his plan and he's going to have his way. So people can say what they want. They can do what they want. But God's plan is going to, you know, God's sovereignty is above all of that. God's will, God's plan always is going to come to pass. He's going to make a way. It may not be this way. It may not be that way, but it'll be one. It'll be a way. <laughs> there will be a way. Um, and it's then in verse 19, he goes and says, repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. And verse 20, I underline this because I love this. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. So once we repent of our sins and we turn to God um, and our sins are wiped away, our guilt is wiped away, our shame is wiped away, then we can finally live in the peace and the joy and the comfort that's provided by the presence of God. Um, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. And then, you know, I love how it talks about Jesus is coming back. I know we're all waiting for it. Um, you know, I just can't wait for that day to come when Jesus comes back. And then it says, um, he just goes on to say about how, um, the things that Moses said, um, that you're, you know, just re re um, reminding them that this is not something new. It's something that's been in the scripture, you know, since the beginning of time. They've been talking about Jesus. This is not new. Um, so make no mistake about it. And then, um, then he ends this section with saying, to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. So he sent him first to you people of Israel to bless you. So by turning from that, it's a blessing to turn from your sinful ways. And it really is, if you think about it, even if you don't even believe in God, it, turning from your sin gives you a peace that you would never know about. People don't realize how much of a slave they are till they're for, to their sins until they're free from them. So outside of even just receiving the Holy Spirit and the presence of God, um, being free from your sin is a miracle in and of itself. And so I love how it says to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. So that is such a blessing. It's something that we should be thanking God for every day, every time that we have turned from a sin or no longer controlled or held captive by a sin. You know, maybe it's a shopping addiction and overeating. Maybe it's, you know, bitterness or jealousy or maybe it's um, you know drugs or alcohol or maybe it's just um, lustful thoughts um, you know anything whatever it is it's a blessing to be free of those things and to not have them control you or have to live by them anymore and um, I just wrote off to say thank you like it's just something that you can thank God for every day like even if you know things are still going aren't going the way that you expect them to or you want them to you know we can always thank God for eternal life so knowing that this is temporary everything that you're going through today everything that's going on right now is temporary and soon Jesus will come back soon you will be in heaven with Jesus and with God and you will be living a life that you can't even imagine now and we can also thank him for releasing us and freeing us from our sins for um, giving us um, that life here on earth a life full of goodness because we're not trapped by our sin anymore so that's my interpretation of Acts chapter 3 I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it leave it in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you stay blessed stay in God's presence and have a great rest of your day I love you